Do not attempt to adjust your uh, dial, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're sort of passing on our normal roll call music. And I wanted to bring it back to my hometown of Philadelphia. Uh, if you are a Philadelphian, you know that this particular theme has some sort of a sentimental meaning. Uh, if you're a watcher of WXTF Channel 29, of course, they use the world famous uh, Twilight instrumental from our guest today. Uh, what can I say? This is, uh, I know I've said we've done special episodes of Quest Love Supreme before, but this is probably super special. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I'm using the word super in front of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you know, we are here in Los Angeles, California, doing uh, doing this in person and not on the Zoom. And, you know, the thing about where we're located is we're just kind of a stone's throw away from the iconic Capitol Records building. And, you know, when you think of that label and if you're love with music, you think of, you know, Brand X, Nat King Cole, The Beatles, and Beach Boys, and Duran Duran, People Bryson, Milk Boy, you know, Pet Shop Boys, Lou Rawls, <laughs> Natalie Cole, you know, there's, but for me, in my childhood, when I think of that, that logo, especially the classic orange and brown logo spinning on the turntable, uh, I think of uh, the, our, our, our esteemed special guest today. And I will say that throughout my childhood, um, when we talk about you get past the barbecue, you best believe that that barbecue <laughs> is going to be uh, somewhat scored and soundtracked by our guest today. You name the classics. We should know them all. They're, they're national anthems, Golden Time of the Day, Southern Girl, yeah. uh, Joy and Pain, feeling. Happy, happy Feeling, feeling. Yeah. We Are One, Back in Stride. Silky yeah. Soul, and of course, you know. Yeah, the morning after the morning after. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Silky Soul. And, silky. Yeah, and not to mention, not to mention the, the, the national anthem of life is Before I Let Go. Yeah, yes. right, right, right. Yes. Um, you know, our, our, our guest is the definition of the barbecue, despite the fact that I've never seen him wear anything but the color white. Listen. <laughs> Listen. And as a Philly native, it is only right that we bring our brother on the show to celebrate his life and celebrate his career. And we have his, his family with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. This is super special. Welcome to Questlove Supreme, the one and only, the legendary Frankie Beverly, along with his cousins, Miss Pugh, Miss Pugh and Will. Thank you. I don't even need my own uh, uh, clap. I, I was ready to. <laughs> Amir, can I just ask you? We, we in DC would appreciate if you would say Philadelphia and DC's own today. Yes. Thank okay. You. See. <laughs> thank you. Part of the part of the running gag of this show is the fact that you know Laia often coats, which is where she's from today. You're from DC today. Yes. I have to rep. Yeah, yes. Yeah, she, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm from Philadelphia today. Okay. We so. battling there. <laughs> but guess what? You're from Philadelphia too. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, man, pleasure, man. Thank you. There's there's so much like I want to know, and I'm so overwhelmed right now because you you are a, a hero to all of us musically and whatnot. And um, I don't know. Just thank you for being there. How how are you today? I'm fine, man. It's beautiful. I'm glad to see you guys, and I'm, it's just wonderful. Thank you. Thank wonderful. you so much. Um, I guess what I would like to know is, were, were you born in, um, I'm claiming it as my hometown. I was born in your hometown. Were you born in Philadelphia? <laughs> yes. What part of Philadelphia are you from? Um, born in North Philly. Okay. Oh. Jill um, wins, not me. Grew up a lot in Germantown. Okay. Yeah. North side of things? Yeah. I'm from West Philly. Yeah, okay. And I think gentrification now has me saying that I grew up in Walnut Lane, which... <laughs> They've recently called it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't even sound right when, coming out of your mouth. When gentrification yeah. comes through, yeah. I was once in the hood, and then now all of a sudden, University of Penn has taken over, so now that's right. we wow. are to call it Walnut Lane. But I live in 52nd and Osage. And that's okay. When I mention like North Philadelphia for you, what, what can you describe to me about it? Well, I grew up there. I grew up down in... Near near the Uptown Theater. Yes. Around that area, I, I grew up there. And were you often a, a, a witness of shows there, or? 
Did you uh, watch a lot of shows at oh, the time? Oh, uh, absolutely. Really? You used to go around there, watch all kinds of stuff. Okay. And then um, got older and went, moved up to Germantown. Okay. And that's where I went to uh, Wagner. You went to Wagner? Yeah. Okay. And Germantown High. Okay. Yeah, Black Thought and... Uh, Frankie Beverly have went to uh, <laughs> Sam, yeah. Germantown High. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Spawn too. Who yeah. Went to, <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So roots related. You went to Germantown High School. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, were you at all in your 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 beginnings as a, as a singer? Were you more gospel based in, like coming through the church, or were you doo wopped? Like, what was your musical uh, both, entry into both? I went to church a lot and sang at the church. But once I got going in school, mm -hmm. um, that's when the other stuff happened. <laughs> <laughs> other things came in my life, you know. How long did you stay in Philadelphia before you, well? Quite a while, okay. quite a while in my 20s. Were you, so was Raw Soul formed in Philadelphia or were they was that your first band or well the butlers okay the butlers was was before that mm -hmm. was that named after streets of Philadelphia were you no <laughs> all right so when you say butler to any Philadelphian right. it's like oh god check <laughs> no it wasn't I, I really don't know where it came from but the name came I, I have to ask this question just for me. Uh, my father is also a, a doo-wop singer from Philadelphia. And so um, that's how I knew, you know, of, of your music. Uh, he was in, my father's Lee Andrews of Lee Andrews in the Hearts. Is that right? Yeah, that's my okay. dad. And so, uh, oh, I was a big fan of them. Oh, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. But, like, generally at the time, like, what was the musical environment of Philly? Because, you know, we often talk about the sound of Philadelphia and people mostly think about like Gamble and Huff and what they've done in the '70s, but not many people know that Philadelphia has a an even richer uh, tapestry of music, doo wop, and you know, with opera, like with everything. But for I, you, I, it's more than what most people think. Philadelphia mm -hmm. was a big time music town. Okay, all sorts of things. You know, I got real. Tied into Frankie Lyman. Was he your favorite singer? He was one of them during, okay. you know, during my young years. Okay. I was a real big fan of him. Is that why you went toward Frankie, the name Frankie? Because Frankie's not your first name. No. Yeah. Yeah. I did my, not know this. Yeah. My name is Stanley. I mean, I'm not. I'm, hey, I didn't. Real, my <laughs> real <laughs> first name. My first name is Stanley. Howard, Howard Stanley. Stanley. Howard, Howard Stanley. Stanley. Okay. Beverly. Yeah. yeah, that uh so Frankie was from Frankie Lyman? Yes. Okay. I yes. did not know that. Absolutely. He the, the more he you started know. me going. <laughs> what was it about Frankie Lyman that you loved? Ooh, he could sing. Okay. He could sing. And he he had a big in, in, impact on me growing up. Yeah. I was about to say he had a big pack on impact on on all of us because even when I was in first grade, so I went to a, a performing arts school in Philadelphia, and first day of school, our uh, it was a music school, and our homework assignment was bring in your favorite song or your favorite forty five, and I brought in Why Do Fools Fall in Love mm -hmm. because my parents had tricked me. My, okay, my mom hates when I tell this story. My dad tricked me into thinking that doo-wop music was new music. So I was in, this is 1976. Okay. So everyone else is bringing in the Bee Gees and Stevie Wonder and whatnot. And I brought in Why Do Fools Fall in Love? And mm -hmm. they were like, oh, this was out when I was a little kid. And, you know, every adult was 100 years old to me. So <laughs> I came home and then when my mom told me, yes, this came out in like 1958. And I thought that was like a thousand years ago. Like, I, that's when I realized there's a timeline on music. Like, so I too thought I too loved 
Why do fools fall in love? And, Me and, too. Yeah, I see that. Me too. Did you have brothers and sisters that were in music as well? Like, did you grow up in a musical household? I mean, my mother and father, my brother sang, but not like I did when I. Okay. I got in the groups real young and so. Raw Soul, do you remember Raw Soul? Yes, yeah. I, I've seen on, on YouTube right now. I mean, there's like there's a concert of Raw Soul. Uh, oh really? Yeah, like mm-hmm. nineteen, I believe, like seventy five, seventy six is yeah. It's live on. It's some. Um, I believe it's in the Bay Area or whatever. Like it's just right before it, it's frankly Beverly Mays. Mm-hmm. It was Raw Soul and like. For me, like the audience, the audience reaction was the most exciting part of watching that. Like, <laughs> as Raw Soul, how are you guys able to get that that exciting reaction from the crowd without having? I, I would assume, did they have singles and a record deal before you guys transferred to Maze? Or we made little re- records before okay. Maze came. Okay. Yeah, when Maze came along, when. Uh, I went to California. Okay. While I was in Philly, it was Raw Soul. Yeah, but but it uh, Philly was my was my teacher. Yeah. Okay. I had a lot of good people, a lot of good acts out of Philly, a lot of talented people out of Philly. I owe a lot of what I am today to that town. Yeah. I mean, I guess the story of how I knew that how Maze came into my life. Um, so I did, I I never knew the story of like Marvin Gaye, mm. seeing you guys and, and discovering you guys until when I heard Silky Soul. Right. Mm. Then I heard the backstory and whatnot about right. you paying tribute to him. But could you talk about like how Marvin Gaye's uh, presence sort of changed the, oh, you man, guys' life? You, know, you can imagine, I mean, to even meet him at that t- stage, and he was s- such a like a big brother to me. Really helped us. What do you What do you think that it was that he saw in you guys that that made it special? We, we were a group. It was about five of us or something. Okay. We were young guys, but we could sing. Yeah, and, and he liked that. Helped us. Uh, actually, did a holiday uh, yeah. Christmas holiday. Okay, and he got involved and helped us do that. And I was so young, then, you know. Mm-hmm. But he was a good guy, man. Really changed my life. Got it going. It's beautiful. And uh, my mother and them loved him. Yeah. That they did. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. It's Marvin. Marvin Gaye. <laughs> right. Hey, that's right. So there's, you know, there's such a, uh, how would you describe the sound of Maze? Because it's it's really hard to describe. I mean, yes, we could say soul music, but there's something about the 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 texture of that that really speaks to black folks in a way that you know if we could figure out the formula i'm certain that all of us would try to copy it and apply it but it's really hard to tell like what what is it that's interesting i've never heard anybody but i think you're absolutely right it's being from philadelphia Mm. has a big thing with that Philly had a lot of talent in the acts. Was there was there any moment or any time period that you guys uh, ever thought about or wanted to record at Philadelphia International, like with Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff, like to be a part of the Philadelphia International system? At that time, I was so young, no. Okay. I mean, I, I wasn't old enough to be tripping on, on that. Okay. Let's see. Um, but then, then I moved to California, and that whole thing changed. I still didn't sign with him, but I got close to him. Okay. And uh, he's always helped me a little bit, too. 
Yeah. yeah. Gamble. Gamble. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. He's always been a, been a big help to me. Okay, so from your perspective, what was it like watching his his journey, like the beginnings of his journey and and this sort of slow rising of of his sound? Like what was it like as family members watching this? Exciting. It was exciting because we saw the work that he put in. Right. Um, it was uh, rewarding uh, for him and for the family because uh, we have a musical family. Yeah. And, uh, of course, not to the extent <laughs> that Frankie has made right. it, but um, we uh, saw the work that he did, the long nights, the... Yeah. The endless nights, I should say, mm -hmm. that he kept going, he kept going, and he knew what he wanted to do. He never wanted to do anything else mm -hmm. but sing and play his music. True. So that's, that's what I saw. I saw somebody that was just determined, and that determination paid off. And he loved what he did. It right. was a passion there. Okay. And the passion. He was passionate about his music. He loved to write. And I asked him this many times, a long time ago. He loved to talk about love. Mm -hmm. Love is his go-to word. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. You're right. It's his go-to word. Right. And he loved to talk. Back then, He, with the, the uprise of all types of things going on with the world, mm -hmm. um, he started to think about those things, too. And he talked about how, like, oh, this is horrible. I'm going to go write a song about this. And so that's, that's how he comes to, um, that's how he came to the We Are One. Okay. People coming together instead of being apart. So he, he, he absolutely started to, to feel about, or start to feel how people were feeling about their own lives. And what about this? We should be as one. We should be helping these other people. Okay. So that's. That's what I saw. I saw him just work hard and think about what other people were going through and just thinking about the love. That's what he that's that's really who he is, the person so, of love. So would you say that songwriting was therapeutic for you in terms of expressing yourself? In yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, cuz I'll say that love like oftentimes I think people will tend to typecast soul music and R&B as somewhat like meaningless love music or whatever. But I don't know. I think coming from you, especially the way you sing, um, there's such a gentle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's comforting it's, almost. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's such a gentle. Oh. Normally gentle singers are, are like a, like high, like mm -hmm. falsetto. Stylistics. Uh, smoky yeah. stylistics. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's very rare to hear a baritone voice or a tenor, mm -hmm. I mean, a baritone voice that's that gentle and that sort of thing. Oh, well, that's nice, man. I appreciate it. Well, no, I'm, 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 <laughs> no, just re I, I really I'm reflecting do. to you what you, yeah. <laughs> I'm only you. showing you what you what you are. But yeah, like in 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 the '60s and '70s, when most uh, lead black singers were high falsetto, mm. high voices, whatever. Uh, for you, was that, was that ever an option, like, to figure out? Because sometimes, like, Ronald Isley will go between his high voice and his low voice, but for you, was there no, ever... No, I never thought of that. Oh, okay. I was going to be the, the singer. The singer. All right. Yeah. The approachable everyday guy. Yeah. Okay, I get that. And uh, that's what he really was, approachable. That's a, that's a good term, yeah. approachable. I see that. Yeah, he was approachable. Um, could you? What? 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 What do you? What, what was I thinking? Yeah. What are you thinking? Honey? <laughs> no, I was. You know what I was just thinking? I was like, yeah, because we. I was thinking about awards, and I was thinking about like these Grammys and these all these awards, and I was like, from, to my recollection, you guys don't have a lot of those, but the acceptance of you in the community, and I've seen you speak about this before, mm -hmm. far exceeds. So that everyday manism that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's worth so much more, it looks yes. like, than yeah. the untouchable mm. of it all. Mm. Right? Yeah. Our people really supported us. Yeah. Yeah. Even from a young stage, too. 
as much as we could. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Now nah, I've uh, I've been to um, I've had the privilege of attending uh, one of your shows. You came to my hometown at uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. This was this was some years back, and y'all mm. played this amphitheater. It was outside, and I mean, you came out, and it was full of people, and they sang every word. Like they sang every word. I was like, if Frankie want to chill tonight, he ain't got to sing. Like we gonna sing for him. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I, I think you know, speaking of what Laie was saying, just you know, I, I just want to make sure that we communicate to you today you know you were just a staple in our household you know what i'm saying like your music wow, was like you. always there and it was and it was oftentimes too it wasn't just your music was there but your music was the soundtrack to some of the best times of our lives like you mm -hmm. always associated i always associated frankie beverly and Mays with good times mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying um and like what you were saying about him singing with love um we need love to live that was like one of my favorite wow. songs like i would always play that i even Cut Fonte. a very long time ago i yeah, sampled it i was like wow i sampled it and rapped over it, it did not come out i was saying <laughs> <saving> that <laughs> I was 16. Was Yo. Just, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Shine, uh, Golden Time of the Day. The oh, shining part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was the original music, The Clones. Oh, my God. If you can ever mash it. Wow. <laughs> but we couldn't make the loop work, and so yeah, then yeah. we start all over again. But go ahead. Yeah, but, uh, but no, um, no, uh, you. it was just always a spirit that came through in your music and um, just really spoke just to all of us and just made us all feel really good. And, um, you know, I, I've seen it, just the magic of you performing and people you know it's like you're a family member yeah that's, that's, that's <laughs> like what it is up. that's what it that's is so beautiful that's you guys is. you guys are gonna make me start crying oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is called the frankie beverly takes his flowers today <laughs> no, straight up, straight up. that's what straight it up. is <laughs> yeah you're hard pressed to find any bands existing today um but can i ask you like at times is it in your mind is it easier is it easier fronting a band or did you ever imagine a life in which you were just a solo artist by yourself without like Frankie, Frankie Beverly and Maze? Like No. Always part of a, of a band. Never thought of myself as a single actor. All right. Ever. Never. So at no point were you just like, hey, I like. No. Oh, it was very moved by Frankie Lyman and the team. Okay, so you always wanted to be in a band context. Yeah. Ah, okay. yeah. I see that. Do you have any memories of like how you write songs or how ideas come to you? I want to say things that I think people want to hear about. Okay. Well, I, I have a question about one particular song, which is the national anthem. Right. Because this is hitting me right now. No, it, this it's the happiest breakup song ever. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say. <laughs> literally, <laughs> when he go. said that... <laughs> Dude. When he said that, I was going through the. I said, "Wait a minute!" Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, even if it's you're the singing happiest a break song. song, it still makes us what, feel happy good. Feelings? What happy feelings? What song? No, before I let go, before I let go, it's like, oh, yo, before you I might as well call it. Go, you yeah. better get on that act right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It might as well, right. It might as well be called that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, now I'm afraid to ever. ask. Like, was that based on it? Like, do you write from real life experiences, or I have friends that write. From their other, like, they'll express what their friends aren't able to express or uh, his experiences, but. You know, that song, I don't, I remember writing it, but I don't, I don't remember what motivated that. <laughs> you forgot her on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, no, but then again, some of the, some of the biggest hits ever are just like afterthoughts. May, maybe it was some thing I was in, I was some. Mm -hmm. It was. <laughs> <laughs> well then you know because the thing is is that that song is on the live album and there's only two other studio cuts on there so i oftentimes i'll ask x like when they stick an extra song or two on the greatest hits or the live album like you know, was and they always say, "Oh, it was just an afterthought." Like we didn't put much deep thought into it. Just we threw it on there, and it became an anthem. Were you shocked? Were you shocked at how that song was received and won't go away ever? I think I was shocked how that song took off. Okay, that's a good point. I, I, I mean, I like the song, but I, I was blown away about how how the people liked it so, so much. Has there ever been 
a Frankie Beverly show in which you don't perform that song? And is there... <laughs> How do you want to go home? Look, Nirvana. <laughs> Nirvana spent a whole year never playing "Smells Like Teen Spirit." Oh, like that some is a, that's white a different people. crowd, <laughs> right? These aunties and uncles, you don't yeah. get happy feelings. We that's got dressed problem. up in all white. We want to hear before I let go. Period. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a lie? Right? <laughs> no, that's that's true, honey. Yeah. Y'all are mentioning songs that people still want to hear now. Right, but yeah. th- there's no songs like that you can skip. You, like Amir said, you can't skip Happy Feelings at a show. You right. have to sing it. have to perform it. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I want to know, how did, uh, if you remember, how did y'all decide on the name Maze for the band? Good you question. Know, that's a, that is a good question. Because <laughs> I like Raw Soul too, but yeah. like, Maze. why? Did, was it Larkin Arnold or someone at Capitol yeah. that was just like, nope, no, get a not, name? No, no. It, was, it was the band members. It was. Well, I, I can tell you that, oh. that, uh, Marvin Gaye didn't like raw soul. Ah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he didn't like raw soul. He didn't like raw soul. What, what did he feel was, did it sound just ordinary to him? or? Well, he just thought I, I needed to change, you know, and he find a little better name for it. Okay. I just remember being a kid and, you know, my aunt, she would have y'all's albums and it was always You maze. try to solve the... I actually would try to do the maze. Yo, me too. <laughs> right I used here. to get the album cover and try to solve the maze. Like, no. Yeah, Man. it didn't get in trouble for writing on her album cover. But, right, uh, right. It, but it was worth it. Like, we have our, our favorites of yours as far as your songs are concerned. But what songs are your favorite in your catalog? Like, what what's near and dear to your heart? Just about all of them I did. Okay. I mean, if if I recorded them, they meant something to me. They they got me inside. They're your kids. Yeah. So it's hard to pick a favorite one. One that you like more than the other, or? Oh I, no, I don't like none of them more than all of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I I thought it was a. It's a blessing, man. It, you know, when you do, when you're a writer, and you, that's a blessing. It comes from, from, from a man above. That's when you're a writer and you come with a, just one thing after another, that's, that's, that comes from uh, from the major place. Yeah. yeah. From another you're source. A vessel. Exactly. We're just a vessel. Yeah. 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 I get it. Is there is there a particular uh, album of all your albums? Do you is there a favorite one of yours that you love more than? If I can't get you one song, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love them all. Okay, okay, I'm gonna remix this question. All right, this is my question. If there was, if there was a way for you not to have to sing one of these songs that you're always singing at every single show, <laughs> which song would you be like? Oh, I'm so happy I don't have to sing that tonight. I love it, but I'm tired. I'm tired. Well, wait a minute now. Yeah. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't throw out the bag. Yeah, right, 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 right. I mean, because you these are songs you've been singing for a long time. Yeah. And I'm just like, you never get tired of just, come on, before I let you go. I'm tired. Yeah. Well, they'll sing it for him. That's true. Yeah, too. that's what I'm saying. He why. does not have to sing. That's like, true. I've it seen is. it. Like, it's, yeah. it is so, like, he. it was a show. You came to you came to Raleigh and uh, Mint Condition was opening, um, and, and so Mint Condition opened. It was a great show, and you know you were doing your songs and everybody. I mean, like literally, like the whole amphitheater. Just thing. said one word. Yeah, you, and that was it. And that's it. He could have put the mic down. He could have danced. He could have did a step. He could have ate chicken. He could have did whatever. It was over. Like they had him. And you, um, another thing that I uh, was was curious to know if and if y'all can want to add on this as well. You know, the thing that's so amazing to me about your legacy is that you've been able to tour. Like people, a lot of times with black artists, we have to, okay, if you're going to go on tour, you got to have a new album out or what new you got, what got. There's always this kind of uh, pressure to feed the machine in order to be able to tour whatever. And you are always an example I've used. I'm like, look, Frankie Beverly ain't put out a new record in however many years, that's but true. people show up for him every time. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Every time, you know what I mean? What do you attribute to that longevity? God. There it is. I hey. mean, I, I, cause I wish I was that smart. <laughs> but no, it's it just is what it is. 
and that's what I do. Yeah. You know. Uh, I have a question. What what part of the United States do you feel is hmm. like your biggest fan base? <laughs> I I would figure. Here you go. Yes, I mean I figured New Orleans because that's where you made the record. However, you know, I've I've learned that you know Asheville, North Carolina also has a great <laughs> audience, and and Oakland has a great audience. So for you, like, what are what are, what are the favorite cities of yours that you've toured throughout the years? Most of them. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No I mean, mo- most I think this the... is why you're a success because you're yeah, right. being like, real you're diplomatic. <laughs> you can say mo- DC, it's okay. Mo- mo- huh? You can say Washington DC. No, it, I was gonna. That's one of them. Okay. <laughs> oh no, that's. I think you know, all of the 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 major cities. Excuse me, what is the white thing? What is the... Why are you yeah, still yeah. my question? <laughs> right, right, right. What, what it's did, a trademark. Yeah. Yeah. What, made, what, what is the inspiration behind wearing so much white? White... Your uh, clothes. The clothes? Yeah. Yeah, when did that become a thing? None of the people who was making my clothes mm-hmm. saw it any different than that. You know, they all suggested the same thing I was wearing all the time. Okay, okay. Yeah, so some somehow they... Thought I'd need to stay in that groove that I was always in. And if you saw some of his earlier uh, outfits in yeah. his earlier years, he would wear red, all red, really, all black. Yeah, that's right. And then he just stuck with the all white. But back in the day, it was all red, red hat. I remember the red? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, back that's in the tribe yeah. video, that was definitely not a white out. That was a white <laughs> outfit time. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. It looks good on you. What? Oh, okay, you're right. I'm looking right now. Um, I did go on Soul Train to see, and you're wearing all red right here. So. I remember that. But with the hat, though, right, Amir? He yes, hat yes. On, always with in the, the hat, hat and the beard. That's how I knew you were. I didn't know you were from Philly, and then, you know, your beard was like... The Philly beard. <laughs> you had a Philly beard, so... He asked the question. Uh, I think it was a, that was back in the early 80s, and... He was actually in L.A. when he did the show. And on that show, he asked, uh, having a conversation with the audience out mm-hmm. there, and they said, I understand that you all think that I'm bald. <laughs> right. Because I wear right. a hat. Right. right. Uh-huh. Yay. But he says, I, he pulls off the hat, and he says, I'm not bald, y'all. It's, this is just a Philly thing. Philadelphians wear hats. Right. So, so that was a, a good moment for him. Actually, wait. I, all right. So this is a, a Philadelphia question. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I grew up with a lot of uncles. My dad almost went through this phase. And, of course, you know, we we knew the, the Spinks family and all that stuff. Did you ever go through the urban cowboy phase? Like, the... You mean the stables the over in uh, the well, stables over in that, West Philly? Are you talking about? Well, are you talking just, about that kind of phase with all the kids were going? Well, no, no, no. Just there was a period in like 76, 77, in which the entire like all black men were just dressing up as cowboys, tight jeans mm. and a cowboy hat. Yeah, like <laughs> Teddy Pendergrass <laughs> wore. I can see the look on his face. No, he like, no, 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 that ain't it. <laughs> I, I missed that one too. <laughs> yes, you ain't singing happy feelings in the cowboy hat. This is no, not it was just Glenn Turner. It was just Glenn Turner. <laughs> okay. No, no, my, <laughs> right, right. No, my mother and my family would have been jumping all over. Hell yeah! From North Philly. Creatively. Is there anything that uh, you have yet to creatively um, achieve or embark on that you would like to do that you haven't done yet? There's some stages we're going to go to. Okay. Yeah. Did Have you guys, like, I've, anytime I've seen you, it's been in the United States, but has, you know, what is uh, his... his Worldwide, international. Uh, yeah. yeah, he Projected. has the oh. same thing. <laughs> yeah, Dang, all right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, ev- everywhere likes us just like here. Yeah. He's toured of uh, um, Europe. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. London, London, Paris. Then Japan. Okay. Yeah, Japan. Uh, have you ever been to uh, Africa at all? Have you ever been to Africa? Not Africa. Yet? Africa yet? Oh Not my yet. God. Yeah, we haven't done a bunch Ooh. of Africa. I feel like Not South yet. Africa would love y'all. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all would kill it. That's a so good too. point. Or the Cape wow. Town, like, uh, there's a, well, I, I think it still goes on, but there used to be a jazz fest in Cape Town. Mm-hmm. And um, nah, y'all would, I think y'all would kill it. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Long overdue. What was your feeling on Beyonce uh, covering Before I Let Go and the the reception that the world gave it? I was blown away with that. And what he told me when that when they were approached, when we were approached about Beyonce doing that, he he respected her, mm-hmm. uh, and he had a, a good relationship with Jay Z mm-hmm. and Beyonce. Okay. And so that he thought it from what. Our discussion was he thought that she would do it justice mm-hmm. and and it would bring forth a whole new generation of people knowing his music yeah. oh, so a, she didn't play it for you first they didn't ask you for like had the song no. right now they didn't play it no for you. Wow. no okay well you know that's that that song's a mighty mountain to climb mm-hmm. so you know uh and you know I will just say that you know, you you have provided us with such um, a timeless, beautiful soundtrack that you know will will never go away. Will be here forever. You know, you're yeah. you're you're the original feel good music, and you know, I want to thank you just for stopping by and I saying hello to us. Ah oh, man, and thank you for all the years of music and good times and everything. All that real. joy. Yeah. All that joy and that love. We felt it. Yeah. So. I really do appreciate y'all. Y'all, you know, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> you're going to make us cry. I'm going to cry when you walk in the door. And you got all white. I was like, Lord, don't right. <laughs> Never stop. Yeah. No, but thank you. Thank you for coming on the show and thank you for taking yeah, your man. flowers. And, you know, more flowers for Bill Sherman. Flowers. Yes, that's all. Bill's there to make sure that everyone gets flowers. Frankie Beverly, ladies and gentlemen. And the best cousins in the world. Yeah, cousins, straight up, straight up. Yes. Oh, thank you. All right. And on behalf of, uh, you know, Fontigolo, Sugar Steve, uh, Unpaid Bill, this long, giant applause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. And thank you guys so much for coming and visiting us. And uh, we'll see you on the next go round of Quest Love Supreme. All right. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.